Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hand Spinner Review Sport YouTube channel. You can check out our Facebook page. Also, there's various different reviews, features and that sort of thing there. The link is in the description for this video. Today we're looking at the NTO Designs Rebar. This is a bar style spinner or bow tie style spinner or bipole spinner, depending on which term you like. Um, it's in brass with some tungsten weights. Um, and it's, it's quite an interesting piece. NTO Designs have been around for a little while now. They're quite a key name on the spinner scene. Uh, they release various different variations of their products. And they're well worth looking into if you, if you haven't seen them already. I've reviewed a couple of their other offerings on the uh, Facebook page. As I say, the link for that is in the description. Um, and this is the first of the bar style spinners that I handled from them. They haven't got many of this sort of style. Most of their output seems to be tri designs. Uh, but this is a very unique looking spinner. The design itself is very interesting and I thought it was well worth taking a look at here today. So before we get into the spinner itself, let's have a quick look at some size comparisons. Okay, so what have we got? This is one of NTO's really core pieces. This is their Turnian model with the inserts. You'll notice the, the barrel inserts are actually, the cylindrical inserts are very similar on both of these. A torque bar, albeit with some custom buttons, uh, the portal from Random Fabrications, and just for fun, and because just the other day a new version or a new style of spinner by Mechforce was released, this is the, the Mechforce Hurricane. So there we go, that's the, the little size comparison for you. As you can see, it's a relatively long bar spinner. It's not a million miles away from the length of a torque bar, but it is just a hair longer, uh, but albeit a little bit more slim in profile. Right, let's put those to one side and get on to, excuse me, and get on to the rebar itself. Okay, so the rebar, as you can see, has a really distinctive design. At, at the moment I saw this, I thought it was extremely pretty. It's got these big, almost heart-shaped cutouts within the body. It's heavily chamfered, but as you can see, the chamfers themselves while they hold a consistent angle, they dip further down on certain areas of the body. We have some ridges along here along the side, which uh, just from looking at it looked like they might be quite good for reverse flicks. Uh, NTO's now sort of ubiquitous uh, magnetic button system, which we'll come on to later. Um, a machine finish, but a very nice looking machine finish, uh, very neatly done. Um, and then the, in this instance, tungsten weights. Now there's something to be said on that. I haven't actually seen the tungsten weighted version of this up for sale. This piece was supplied to me by Fabian at Spinspace um, just for a review and then a return uh, on behalf of, um, of Freddie and Co at NTO Designs. And on the website I've only seen brass insert versions and stainless steel insert versions. I don't think that will make a, a huge difference to the review um, and I hope that they will be releasing the uh, weights on their own at some stage so that people with this spinner can interchange the weights and, and have a little bit of fun with theirs. So that brings us on to how the spinner actually functions. Well, it's a bar spinner, so a reverse flick is very comfortable with it. It's Quite an ergonomic spinner from that point of view, but I would say that one of the, the largest downsides with this piece, and we'll do the downsides sort of mixed in as we go here, is the, the forward flick. It's quite hard to get, certainly for my hands at least, a decent purchase on this to forward flick. The way that the body is cut away, you can't really get in there particularly comfortably, and that would be one of the, the biggest downsides to the design. Now, if you're someone who almost never does that and you just generally reverse flick your spinners, I really can't see you having much of a problem with the rebar at all. It, yeah, it's a very comfortable spinner. Having a quick look at the bearing inside, it's an R188, as you can see, it's an 8-ball R188 hybrid ceramic. It's a nice bearing, does the job very well, and it enables this piece with the tungsten weights and the sort of heavy amount of outer mass that we see in this design to do spin times of well over seven minutes. It's, um, it really is quite a long spinning design. Coming on to the actual buttons, as you can see, they are a magnetic finish. I have mixed feelings about magnetic buttons. I don't really like the way you can feel them kind of they, ru they run against each other within the body while you're using the spinner. It's not that they're insecure or anything like that. It's just that, for me personally, it's a slightly, it's a slightly 
unusual feeling that I don't really enjoy. Now, I think it might be largely down to the fact that the weights are inserted from the top um, in the NTO Designs buttons. And in contrast to the Thrax, which I hope at some point I'll be able to review on the page, although there is a, a written review up on the, um, on the Facebook page itself as well, those are inserted into the base, and so the magnets themselves touch each other, and I don't find that you get as much of that swivelling when you're actually using the spinner as you do on the NTO buttons. The buttons are also quite small, they're not a great deal different in size to um, those you'd find on a, t on a torque bar in its original state. They're slightly larger in diameter I believe, but not much, and I personally find that gives the gives the spinners a slightly cramped feeling. Now when we look at something like the Turnian here, these are available with various different button sizes. So you can get what NTO like to call their double stack buttons, um, and you can get just extra large buttons as well which cover the whole of this bearing core that you can see. I think that would make this a much more comfortable spinner, although I haven't actually had those in hand yet to try. But that is not an option when you're looking at something like this or their other bar spinner, the tactical, because the way in which the button is seated means that nothing would actually work over here without something being very specifically machined to fill that gap and then sit over. Um, it's not a huge deal, but personally I think it makes this piece perhaps not the most ergonomic spinner on the market. As you can see though, it's quite a smooth spin, um, and to say that it's having tungsten weights in it, which tungsten can be... It's a beautiful material, it's very heavy, very dense, but the downside to tungsten is that it can have variances from piece to piece. It's not the most consistent material in the world, and so by using it you're opening yourself up to potential issues with, with wobble and that sort of thing. It's, it, as you can see, this really doesn't suffer from it. My greatest complaint with the rebar, and I, I still really like the design, I still really like the shape from, a, from an aesthetic point of view, but perhaps not for forward flicks, is the weights themselves. They're lovely, they look really nice, they've got a nice machine finish on the top which catches the light really well, hopefully you can see that there. But they are quite loose and there's nothing wrong with the fact that they're loose in the sense that I believe I'm right in saying that this was always intended to be a modular design which people would be able to purchase weight, weights for later on. But I find that the fact that they are loose and please comment in the description below if you, not in the description below, in the comment section below, um, if you have one of these with the other weight types and whether or not this is just something that I'm finding on this one or whether it's common with them. But sometimes on a very powerful reverse flick I can actually push these weights either to the point where they unbalance a spinner and you get the kind of wobble that you can see there or I can push them out altogether which obviously isn't a particularly good thing in terms of the fact that you might well lose one of these if you're wandering down the street with this spinner. If this was mine I would put a dab of low strength blue Loctite inside, sandwich it all together and then clean up any excess and that would solve the problem without any problem at all and would allow you to remove them um, with some pressure in the future for, for swapping them out. So it's a relatively minor nitpick if this is your own piece and you can make the small modification but as this obviously isn't mine and it will be going back um, I think for a, uh, a giveaway in spin space um, after I'm done with it it, it doesn't make much sense for me to be messing around with it and I certainly wouldn't do that. So yeah, that is the rebar from NTO Designs. I'm going to be featuring more of the um, the NTO pieces. I'm, a, I'm quite a big fan of the company, particularly, particularly this guy here. I think this is an absolutely fantastic spinner and you can find a full written review of that on the page. Um, again, link in the description. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the rebar. It's a very nice spinner, very unique spinner if you want something that's very much got its own flair, its own quality about it. It's well worth considering. It's not one that I would personally carry. It's a little bit too long for me maybe and I personally like something which can be flicked forward or reverse more easily than this can and with more force. But it's worth having on your radar and NTO are very much worth having on your radar. Thank you very much for your time guys. See you soon. Bye.